I think if you're looking for a job creation and opportunity, merge 3D creation and the skills that can be found in AI. And I think you'll be really set up well as an entrepreneur. I feel like somebody who runs a business for somebody who's never run a business sees a dollar very different. <laughs> and like when you run that business and you're the one bringing in that money, like a dollar's a dollar. I'm not letting yeah, that slip. No I'm not letting that slip. If I could make an extra dollar, save an extra dollar, like that's a no brainer. Consumers are getting smarter and smarter. Like they're less susceptible to impulse purchases from just seeing an ad, right? As being a NFT owner, digital collectible owner, you're kind of lumped into that crypto space. What are your thoughts on crypto now and in the next 12 months and same for the digital asset category? Welcome to the Virtual Ventures Podcast, episode 18. I'm your host, Andres Sanchez, and today I'm joined by the visionary Raspi, co-founder of A Kid Called Beast, a groundbreaking NFT project. He's a multi-time entrepreneur with an insatiable drive for innovation. Get ready to be inspired as we explore the world of blockchain and NFTs with Raspi on the Virtual Ventures Podcast. Let's dive in. Raspi, how we doing, my man? Pleasure to see you today. Thank you for joining us on the pod. Raspi is the founder of A Kid Called Beast, an NFT project. If you are watching online, you are able to see that he is actually utilizing one of the features of holding one of these NFTs that's coming out. So I cannot wait to dive into that. Thank you for coming on, man. Yeah, my pleasure, dude. Thanks for having me on the show. For sure. And before we kind of jump into things, I always forget to say it, but do us a favor, like, subscribe, comment, show some love. All of Raspi's information is going to be at the bottom too. So make sure to actually read the description that we put time into writing and give us all a follow. So thank you for that. Raspi, I like to get right into things. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Who are you? How did you kind of come to this point in your journey? And then we'll kind of break off from there. Yeah, definitely. So I'm Raspi. I'm one of the co-founders of a project called The Kid Called Beast. A project that started with my friends about almost two years ago now. And uh, it was a project that we wanted to create that was just something for our souls, something that was very art focused, culturally focused in terms of like music, fashion, uh, technology. And we wanted to kind of combine all of our passions into creating something that was fun and brought people together. And here we are. Now we built up this like really cool, amazing brand with a uh, really strong community and uh, we're having a lot of fun along the way. That's amazing. So tell us a little bit more about the earlier part. I know it wasn't just a one hit wonder into this NFT world. How was the early on portion of your life? Were you entrepreneurial? Did you do that nine to five? Let's kind of dig a little deeper. Yeah, definitely. So early on in my life, I started off doing uh, nightclubs and nightclub events and like hosting like music festivals. That's what I got into as like one of my first uh, forays into entrepreneurialism. I've been an entrepreneurial kind of spirit individual for my whole adult life. I started when I was like 18 years old. I'm 35 now, so I've been, uh, you know, a self-starter pretty much my entire life. Yeah, I started off with, uh, you know, doing music events and uh, nightclub events and doing like music festivals. And then I got uh, out of that industry and moved into digital marketing, a lot of creative agency kind of work, uh, just building out stuff for other brands into e-commerce, you know, through that process naturally, because, you know, obviously you pick up a lot of skills running a digital marketing company. So you use a lot of those skills for some of your own startup concepts and ideas. So I launched a bunch of e-commerce brands and products and you know, did really, really well with those. I still have my agency today. I'm like very, like barely involved. I have like other people in place that do a lot of the agency stuff. But yeah, got into uh, investing after uh, agency work. I'm just kind of investing in like a lot of startups and, and uh, you know, stocks, found crypto along that journey. You know, did, did really, really well in some early crypto investments, uh, on some stock investments. Made a lot of money during like the foreign exchange era of COVID, which was you know, it was, it was really great conditions for trading, you know, during like these uh, economic crisis events. So uh, yeah, just kind of started diving into uh, crypto kind of along the way, found and discovered NFTs, thought that they were really cool in the way that they brought people together. And uh, we're really focused on the art, it's something I really enjoy as like a hobby, as a passion. And uh, yeah, just started talking to a few friends about doing our own kind of iteration of, of what we thought an NFT or digital collectible could be, because there's a lot of projects out there that were conceptually building some really cool stuff, but they just were like, lacking on the execution side. They weren't delivering a lot in terms of utility for their community. And so we wanted to come in and kind of change that, start you know, putting utility first and creating a lot of cool use cases and, and benefits for, for community members. And uh, here we are. That's, uh, that's what we kind of set out to do. Now, you know, we've been building in a bear market the entire time. So it's a really unfavorable conditions for being able to build something like this. But uh, we're, I mean, we're making our way. It's, it's, uh, it's a good time. We're having fun. Awesome. Yeah. It's a common theme for people like yourself. Like I've had so many entrepreneurs on the show over the last eight weeks and investing, 
being financially savvy, it's like one of those things that's a no brainer. And I think that has a lot to do with getting involved in business early on. Like you learn so much. I feel like somebody who runs a business for somebody who's never run a business sees a dollar very different. <laughs> and like when you run that business and you're the one bringing in that money, like a dollar's a dollar. I'm not letting yeah, that slip. No. No I'm not letting that slip. If I could make an extra dollar, save an extra dollar, like that's a no brainer. So I love that traditional path. And I love how you've continued to innovate and kind of went from a young entrepreneur to now a seasoned entrepreneur co-founding a global company. I mean, A Kid Called Beast has an amazing community, an amazing following. I've been watching you guys build and what you're doing in a bear market is amazing. I mean, I see the level of community you guys provide. And I think that's like one of the biggest parts and something I want to touch on right now is my initial startups that I ran in college were all built off Discord, all community-based, very lucrative businesses. Building a community is tough. How has that part of the business been? Yeah, no. So with our project, it was very community first. Like we started building the community. We, we incorporated the community in every one of our decisions that were like major to the brand and the project. And so it was kind of a natural flow, I guess. Like we spent so much time you know, with them, with their help curating what we were trying to do that like the, the community element kind of just formed very naturally. There was a lot of education around like what we were doing and a lot, a lot of education around what we were building. There was like a lot of you know motives and incentives. It was very easy to pick up and start you know getting involved. And so a lot of community members just felt compelled to, you know, just pick up some of the tools and, and just started becoming active in, in different, you know, building processes and different endeavors, uh, whether it came to, you know, 3D printing the characters, whether it came to, you know, just posing them, animating them, styling them, putting them in different scenes, you know, pushing the technology a little further, uh, developing, you know, branded items, clothes. It was like a lot of community involvement right from the get-go. And so it was pretty easy to form a community in, the, in that sense. Like we, we gave people a lot of tools and things that gave them stuff to do, which is traditionally not something NFTs do. Like you usually just get a profile picture and that's where it ends. Hmm. Uh, we kind of wanted to reverse that model and, and make it like, you know, here's a lot of stuff you can do right from the get go, right from the jump. You can, you have things to play with, you have things to tinker with, you have ways to get creative and ID. And so through that process, you know, you're surrounded by all these people that are creating, developing, building. Naturally, you know, you're going to form an awesome community because, uh, you're, you're meeting like-minded driven people just like yourself that are willing to, you know, come in and, you know, let their imagination kind of be their guide for, for creativity and, and having fun, right? You're meeting you know, tech savvy, creative individuals. So why wouldn't you want to network with these people? Why wouldn't you want to become friends with these people, right? Whereas like, you know, traditionally NFTs are a purely a money speculation game, similar to like tokens or stocks and like, you know, what kind of community can you, you know, truly form around this, this kind of concept in a lot of cases, like you're going to be surrounded by you know, people that are just purely only focused on money and, and not like creativity or, or creating anything like meaningful beyond money. Like money is, if you're an entrepreneur, it's something that like you'll find it no matter what. You don't have to like rely on others or or, or take advantage of others to get it. You can, it'll, it'll come to you. It'll gravitate to you as long as you have a passion and, uh, and like a will to do something that uh, you enjoy. And if you're doing something you enjoy naturally, you'll get very good at it. People will want to pay you money for it. So, so yeah, it's kind of like a difference in approach that we've taken, I think, versus like a lot of other projects. Projects. That, that is why it's kind of like, you know, we're attracting the type of people we want in the community, people that are, you know, creative and goal orientated and their, their primary objective isn't only uh, money, right? For sure. And how vital is that community to your brand? Like, I personally have been saying this for like, probably the last two, three years that I think brands that can go out and build a solid community. And that's not e-com brands or NFT brands. Like I'm talking things like a grocery train chain that can build a solid community of customers that they use. Customer service departments are quickly going to become obsolete. Yeah. And just like the people who really love the brand will just out of the kindness of their heart, answer questions in a group or give suggestions or help out. It's so like, the best way, right? Like when you think yeah. About it, and when you make a, like, even like purchasing, for example, like, you know, consumers are getting smarter and smarter. Like, they're less susceptible to impulse purchases from just seeing an ad, right? Like, unless you have a breakthrough product that's doing something completely different or a breakthrough service that's doing something completely different, you're going to want to see a referral at very least from a customer of that product or service, somebody that's vouching for how good that product or service is. Ideally, that person is a friend. That is that, that that is that point of referral for you to be able to make the decision into the investment of whatever the product or service is, right? Like the days of like, you know, here's like an impulse ad from, you know, on Facebook, on Instagram, on TikTok. I'm going to go make an impulse purchase for this item because I saw an ad. Like those days are getting numbered, right? People yeah. are getting a lot smarter. They're being wiser with their money. They want to see a community. They want to see happy customers. They want to see, you know, sentiment from the consumer saying that this is you know a viable or good purchase versus like the other way around of like you know marketers telling you what you have to like you want the the, the people 
who are buying into it and, and, and using the brand and the product telling you that it's good, right? That's, I think for me, it's like a, a much more unbiased perspective of like determining you know, whether something's a good buy or a, or a shitty buy, right? Like I don't want to be told by a marketer that I should buy something, right? Like people try to sell you stuff all day long. Like the worst part of, you know, buying a car is the car salesman when you get to the dealership in most cases, right? Like that's one of the worst parts of the entire experience because like they're yeah. trying to push you into something. Same with realtors, right? Worst part of the buying experience. In my opinion, these people can be and will be phased down and replaced over time, right? Where there is not going to need to be that component it is going to be purely community driven uh, purchases right i think it's just like that's kind of the way things are going people want that like that trust list or, or very trusting opportunity to be able to buy stuff either through verifying that something actually is good and in, in, you know using technology or through you know a peer-to-peer -peer experience to be able to decide if something is you know valuable or not yeah i'm in 100 percent agreement i think that that's the way that we're headed and i think that's why even you see big brands now trying to push communities and getting their people into groups and chats and things like that. I just think it's the best way to go forward. Let's do a little bit of a pivot and talk about the art. I think yeah, cool. that your NFT is one of the ones that I would group into the IP potential products. When you look at NFTs and you can see a few that look like, hey, I could see an action figure in this or I could see a, a plush toy in this. What yeah. was the inspiration for the artwork side of things and how has that been going? It's been going really, really well. I'll actually show you some some stuff I got actually nearby. Awesome. I got this guy right here. Wow, that thing is uh, huge. Yeah, this guy is the same size as a bear brick, a 70 centimeter model. This is a kid called Beast toy. Of Man, actual, uh, that thing is cool. <laughs> yeah, it's got like the, I mean, it's basically like, yeah, it's my uh, my little Man. Puppetar character. So yeah, this thing's uh, like a big. <laughs> and also, monster. sorry, if you're not watching online, he just showed, and if you're not familiar with a bear brick, it's like a figure. I don't know, how many feet tall do you think that is? Like two feet tall? They're se uh, 70 centimeters tall, I believe, for the, okay. the large size. So they're like two and uh, two feet in a bit. That's awesome. Little ones and another size. So like little different comparable <laughs> sizes. Uh, so yeah, uh, no, we're, we're working on a lot of cool like little stuff. They're going to be... Uh, they're gonna have like NFC chips in the head of the toys too. So you can like do different kinds of activations and different kinds of like cool features, like augmented reality features or validating if they're authentic or not, or if they're counterfeit, which is something That's I think the toy industry hasn't really thought of. Like there's a lot of yeah. forgery in that industry because it's a high ticket item. Something that people, you know, the same type of people that in a lot of cases buy sneakers and resell sneakers are the same audience that uh, yep. buy art toys. And like, I think like sneakers too, like that's a, uh, a big problem that needs to be solved. There's a ton of counterfeits for sneakers. Like, you know, during the Yeezy craze, like, you know, yeah. half the Yeezys on people's feet were fake, if not more, right? And like, unless you know how to authenticate them and like you're an expert in knowing how to check the colorways, like, I mean, that, that means a problem. You shouldn't need a third party to have to authenticate stuff in that way, right? They would have yeah. you know, you eliminate the forgeries, right? Chips are very easy to produce for authentication. They're very cheap to produce too. It barely adds any cost or margin to a product. And so like, yeah, now we're looking at just like taking a lot of these uh, these ideas and just like adding them to the products that people already know and love and just making them better and improving the, their uh, you know, providence, their uh, you know, abilities with what they can do and being able to you know, reach the end collector and being able to uh, you know retain them as well too through different different activations by having these these toys chip. And what was the inspiration behind the design? Like how did you yeah. come to what is now a kid called Beast? For sure. So uh, me and Caleb, we wanted to do like a really cool hype beast kind of art toy. We wanted something that was like a coming of age kind of character, like kind of expressing our inner child, but like with an ode to like the privacy component of like Web3, because Web3 is very much like anybody who's on Twitter or crypto, like not a lot of people show their faces, right? Yeah. People are generally anonymous and that's one of the reasons people really like it. So the ski mask was uh, something we wanted to incorporate in the character early on because the ski mask is like the classic, like anonymous, you know, person kind of uh, outfit you would wear, right? Like it's either a hoodie or a ski mask, right? Like it's kind of like the way people kind of think of like an anonymous character if you ever go on like a, a live video stream or whatever. So, so yeah, we wanted to uh, create a character that embodied, you know, that. You know, ski mask is also obviously like a cool, just kind of like urban kind of fashion piece, like an accessory. So it kind of added to the whole hype piece element. And yeah, we wanted it to be like a, a kid-like character to like identify with everybody's kind of inner kid. Because like, I feel like as long as you have that inner kid, you're always going to have you know, fun and like you'll be able to find, you know, creative outlooks for things and not take things way too seriously. And so we kind of combined these ideas. We were tinkering with a, a lot of naming structure and stuff. Kid Cuddy's uh, first album, his first mixtape was called A Kid Named Cuddy or A Kid Called Cuddy, I believe. No, it was a Kid Named Cuddy. So we used that kind of naming structure with Hype Beast, kind of toyed with names. Caleb came up with A Kid Called Beast. He's one of the other co-founders. And we're like, as soon as I heard him say it, I was like, that's the fucking name. Like, for that's sure. it. 
that's the one. And uh, so we, just, we, we ran with the name. The name's Trademark now. Uh, and, awesome. And so we have like that as like a solid uh, branding that we have. And when we were creating the character, we, we kind of brainstormed a lot of ideas for how we wanted it to look and feel. Like very inspired by like a lot of Japanese designs, Bart Simpson, SpongeBob, Cause, figurines, like Bear Bricks, like a lot of the classic kind of artworks, Kid Robot, like all that kind of stuff. And we found an artist by the name of Jamie Alvarez, really, really talented artist, uh, character creator. He's worked with like Nike, Adidas, Sony, Instagram, Facebook, Meta. He's worked with a lot of different like brands to kind of create a lot of characters for, for different commercials and activations. And so, yeah, we just basically uh, kind of showed them our concept, our idea. And uh, we went through like a ton of iterations till we got to where we're at now with this character. So yeah, we're really, I mean, we're really happy with the design. He did an amazing job of bringing the character to life and like very much like, has a really cool vision for you know pushing the the character universe forward for like we've just been exploring all these different cool art ideas and he's been kind of leading the way on the art side of things yeah i think there's like huge room for potential in that area i feel like bear brick has and cause have really owned that space for so long yeah, and yeah. there's tons of other ones but none are staples like those two are in like the large figurine and i think as the younger generation like my generation i'm 24 i've grown up knowing what cause and bare bricks were and i want one in my house when i move out and go and get my living room and my like kind of area so like something like that you guys have created with this toy is a perfect fit in my opinion and i've been just following the nft space a little bit lately and i've been watching what pudgy penguins is doing in the ip area and in my opinion i i think they're set for a home run with that toy and design and, and i think they're taking it the right route how does that open doors up for you guys because you are one of those other groups one of those other projects that i've grouped into the large ip potential because the character looks very desirable and something you can really take from the screen to reality and have it be something you'd want to have hanging around i mean some people might hate me for saying this but like a bored ape like I don't think that's that cool to like, I'm not going to like ask for a figurine of my board ape, or I'm not going to most likely hang a picture of it. Like I want product in hand. And I use that as just an example because a really popular NFT. But again, back to what I was saying, how does this type of new route to market, like focus on the IP, build an actual physical product off the community and the artwork? How is that like in the plans for you all going forward? Is that like priority number one? Is yeah, that that's definitely like priority number one? Because like, the way NFTs are structured, like royalties are not, in my opinion, like a viable business plan. Like royalties are not something that are eternal, especially when market phases uh, change uh, during like a project's life cycle. I mean, if they were viable, like there'd be so many projects from 2021 that would still be uh, peeking around actually doing something, right? And as we know, like if you were around in 2021 in an NFT era during its like biggest boom, like there was a lot of promises made, a lot of money raised, like hundreds of millions of dollars, collectively billions of dollars. And how many of those projects are around today? Like very little, right? There's like you know, the board API clubs, the Doodles, you know, the Clonex, like a few of these types of brands that are you know, actually actively still building, but like far and few in between compared to what we had in terms of like capital raise, like there's projects that we raised you know, tens of millions of dollars that just disappeared without a trace. They didn't uh, deliver anything. They didn't even deliver a t-shirt at the end of the ball, right? Uh, which is super sad to see. Like that, that to me is like, makes no sense. Like kind of a wasted opportunity. Like if you're looking at like the startup tech potential of this, if had, you know, had any of those projects actually delivered on their promises, we'd have a much healthier space. We'd have like much happier space. There wouldn't be like, you know, as many people upset or like jaded or traumatized from all the different rugs and scams they've been involved in. Cause like, and think about it, I mean, how many people probably left as a result of a lot of these projects, just not even delivering on any of their stuff that they promised their holders. Yep. So yeah, no, I mean, we're trying to do things different. We're trying to build a really cool IP play. Like we were, we're going for that, you know, 2023 20, and beyond Mickey Mouse. So then we can put on everything, anything that's like cool, you know, bringing people together, combining music, fashion, art, gaming, like we're building a video game right now, a mobile game, which is uh, going to be kind of like a Fortnite meets Super Smash Bros meets Mario Party kind of vibe really cool concept we came up with. So we're going to be beta testing that pretty soon. Toys, obviously, it makes sense to do an art toy just with the character model. Clothing, augmented reality features like the, the mask you saw me wearing earlier. Something that's good for just content creation on the fly, you know, whether you're on mobile or maybe you're a desktop streamer who's really good at gaming, but you don't want to show your face because, I mean, let's face it, there's a lot of fucking weirdos online, right? <laughs> you might not want to show your face. You might just want yeah. to have fun in the game and be able to talk but have a, uh, you know, expressive uh, character in place of your actual face, right? So we're creating a lot of like really cool technology tools for people to be able to build and enjoy and be part of the process. And, you know, we, we lean towards our community for everything that we're doing, like in terms of their feedback, them being like, you know, the, the first people, the ambassadors, the influencers behind the brand and what we do. And just kind of, you know, making sure that we're always steering in the right direction uh, with
with their guidance, making sure that they ID and they let us know whether we're on the right track or the wrong track or anything, right? Because I feel like if they if we get their support and their backing in anything we do, then it'll be very easy like to get the support of people outside of the space. Because I mean, if they already you know committed and they fell in love with the brand and project in such a big way, I feel like you know that's kind of like the first step towards you know any any kind of mainstream adoption, any kind of mainstream plays. So so yeah, that's kind of like uh, you know how we're how we're doing things, how we're building in terms of the IP. You know, obviously Luca from Budgie Penguins does an outstanding job for for bringing toys to to the masses in terms of like just getting them out there and creating an awesome mechanism for, for onboarding new people into uh, digital collectibles and NFTs as a whole. I don't even like using the word NFTs, honestly. It's like such a tainted name. I, yeah. I think I call it digital collectibles because like I don't really want to be lumped in the same category, honestly. But yeah, no, he like Luke has done an awesome job. There's a few other projects doing like a really great job. You know, obviously Artifact with Nike and they're they're killing yeah. it. They're doing really cool things with physical goods obviously you know it's a it's a great uh, combination a few other projects that are actually like building something significant that, that that is viable that it's not just like you know a profile picture which at this point in time like, to me doesn't make any any sense right like an idea yeah. being that much for an identity like is like i don't know like anyone who disagrees is like <laughs> because I'm putting their bags right now. Yeah, it's a, I agree. Like we're past that portion of the NFT space now. And I, I do agree. I think the word NFT is slightly stained. I mean, yeah. there was a lot of turmoil from just bad managed projects and people who probably shouldn't be running big businesses getting the chance to run them just built off that hype. But I mean, in any market, that's what a market does. It cleans out all of those projects and the ones that are quality will survive and move forward. And it, it is tough on the community because you might have been caught up in some of those things, but it's yeah. projects like yours that are the reason why people stick around and want to continue to be in the space. Are the toys going to be mass market a play? Are they going to be for members only? How's that? And if they're going to be mass market, like where can somebody go buy them or where can somebody go buy them in the future when they do come out? Totally. So as far as the toys go, we're going to be taking a, a few different types of plays and approaches. Like there's going to be an online component to it for sure. There's going to be exclusive drops uh, for holders as well. Something that can only be received if, if you are a member. But then there's also going to be a mass market component. We're partnering with a very, very large brand to do a, an exclusive drop for a new marketplace that they're launching. And we're one of the, the launch pet partners for, for this new thing that they're building. I can't talk too much about it. Uh, I'm on an NDA, but very, very exciting thing that we're going to get to be a part of. Um, so that'd be one of the first online kind of mainstream mass exposure plays that we're doing with the brand. And beyond that, we're definitely going to be working with a lot of hypey stores, our toy stores, uh, to make sure that they have a kid copies on display in their store and, and kind of making that sure that we we have that foot that walk up traffic that uh that mainstream kind of appeal so we are you know you're definitely gonna be able to there's a few stores i already have in mind uh, i mean you said you're in miami yeah uh, we're definitely gonna have i keep all these you know, sitting on shelves in a, in a few stores uh local to you i love that yeah. we, like, we so got a chat we got to chat yeah, about that I, offline so I can go find them. Yeah, yeah. There's going to be like a lot of really cool components to it and just features too. Like we want the, the toy to not just be like only a toy that sits on your desk. We wanted to have some cool unique features that the toy store toys don't, don't typically built in. They didn't really think of, right? So I think that it'll change the game with, with how people look at uh, these toys and what their potential is. For sure. And as being a NFT owner, digital collectible owner, you're kind of lumped into that crypto space. What? are your thoughts on crypto now and in the next 12 months and same for the digital asset category? I mean, I got a very bullish perspective on on crypto as a whole. Like I uh, think it solves so many problems, so many like utility problems. And I mean, I love Miami for that reason. Like Miami is a very crypto friendly city. Very um, crypto friendly. Yeah, they're, they're, they're pushing forward in a lot of the right ways as a city, a uh, very friendly place to do business if you're a crypto entrepreneur. But yeah, as far as crypto goes, I mean, it, you think about it, it solves a lot of problems that uh, you know traditional fiat faces, right? Like one example, for example, is uh, you know being able to transfer money on weekends. If you're trying to do a bank transfer, it's a little bit chaotic, right? There's certain you know hours of operation. There's limitations on uh, how many you know, how much funds you can send over X period of time. There's speed issues, you know, how fast it can be done. It's not instant in a lot of cases, like wires are not instant. There's heavy fees involved. You know, at very, very bare minimum, you're looking at 3%, you know, transaction fees for credit card purchases, which I mean, I consider a fiat purchase. You have, you know, massive fees involved in, you know, large wire transfers and then like the borders issue too with transferring money. Like there's different rules in different uh, countries and different city, uh, areas of the world that just becomes a, you know, massive uh, headache. I think, you know, crypto has much lower fees to transfer money. Uh, there's no borders. So you can you can transact anywhere there's you know complete confirmation that when you send something from one side you can see that it's been received on the other end without having to go ask the person to 
to see if they've received it. There's no chargebacks. So there's like less fraud from the perspective of you know, point A to point B, as long as you know both sources are verified and trusted, like you're, you're not at, at risk to that. Like it doesn't shut down on weekends. Like you can do it any time of day, any hour of day, any part of the world. As long as you have an internet connection that you like, you're good to go. You can send crypto to anyone, right? I think like these reasons alone are like you know, huge problem solves for you know, why use crypto instead of fiat for, you know, transacting globally or even just like a peer to peer transaction. You want to send your friend like, you know, some money or it's an emergency, whatever. Like I feel like Do is great for that. And it also has, you know, provability and provenance. Like you can go on a blockchain and you know, figure out, you know, when the last transaction was made or, you know, just you confirm things. You can go back check things. You can verify things. I think that's like something that's really difficult to do with like banned transactions. Like they don't even store your records for a certain point in time. Like they're still on a paper record system in a lot of cases, just like recently moving over to, you know, paperless transactions and they, they're not going to store your records for the rest of time. If a bank were to ever have their servers go down or I don't know, worst case scenario, maybe a bank gets liquidated because uh, they don't have enough assets. You run into so many risks in terms of record keeping and like, it just puts people out a lot of liability. Like Myself, personally, I, I think people should be in charge of their own assets. They should be custodians of their own assets. They shouldn't have to necessarily trust another third party with holding their assets. Like, obviously, you need you know, money in the bank to operate as a business. Like, that's a given. You need credit to be able to make purchases in the real world in a lot of cases, especially if you're paying, you know, manufacturers and suppliers and retailers. But, like, personal funds, I don't know. I feel a lot better hanging on to my own money instead of storing it somewhere in an institution where I know these people are lending it out, moving it around, there is a very real possibility for there to be a liquidity crisis. If, let's say you know, a good percentage of that bank's customers decide that they want to uh, withdraw their funds at the same time. There's going to be a shortage of you know that access and you know how that works for sure. So like to me, that's like a like a choke point for like storing your funds in a secure place. Yeah, I mean that was that was great, and like I think that's just a kind yeah, of show that anybody who wants to learn if crypto is a good idea or not for the, just the first uh, you know intro to crypto and what problems it solves. I guess. Yeah, no, this is perfect and definitely something that we're going to clip so other people are able to see it. And I, I just think it's great. I think we we talked about where you started. We talked about your passion for the nft digital collectible space the artwork and then we kind of wrapped it up with a conversation around crypto itself which is what the business is really built off of right now so i think for anybody that's been listening like one nfts digital assets are not dead there's amazing projects like this still being built still growing with real value and ip not a lot of the unfortunate things that you dealt with during the big boom. So if there's a reason to get back into NFTs or look into NFTs, this is a perfect example. And then two, crypto. Like if you want to learn more, if you're interested in learning more, there's amazing people like Raspi who are passionate about the space and will really kind of go through and explain why there's value. And I think everybody should be educated on all of these different avenues of transferring money because you never know when things might shift or when things might change. So one, I think it was a great explanation and two it's just been really interesting to hear your perspectives like all the way through something i like to do at the end of every episode is take us a little bit away from the hardcore business conversation ask something super simple that you can answer however you want and that is what are you excited about in the near future i'm just excited about like the merger of more technology in our society i i uh, i love what's going on in ai for example like the chat gpt thing that's just kind of revolutionized people's workflow and their thought processes. I love, you know, communities coming together uh, and, and helping brands make, you know, good decisions that are in the benefit of community members. I guess it's just all kind of like a more of a web three versus web two movement. Web two being like, okay, we can finally like socialize and interact with content that, you know, companies are, are releasing. Web three being, you know, we're a part of that uh, conversation uh, deeply. We, we're, we have ownership. We can trade these assets. These assets maintain value you know, after the, the initial sale and we're key decision makers in how brands move. I think like that's kind of uh, something I'm really, really excited about more brands moving towards that, that angle of like including their community and making decisions alongside and in parallel to their community. I think it will create better products, it'll create better services, and it'll create happier customers and happier people overall. I'm right there with you on the excitement. Um, I think that's a perfect answer and something I also agree with. I love technology. I think that there is so much more innovation to come, and I think that we are going to be the beneficiaries of that. And if you're listening right now, go out and learn more about tech. 
go learn about AI, go learn about all these cool things that we're building on a weekly and monthly basis. You will really thank yourself in the next 20 years because these products will be the reason why some people get left behind and some people really do succeed long term. So do yourself a favor and go educate yourself because there's so many amazing things. Raspy, this episode has been amazing and it's, it's an absolute pleasure to have you on the pod on the phone. Oh boy, long day. This yeah, too, like, for sure. Like Final note for like anybody who's like trying to explore being like an entrepreneur and like being a self-starter. Like I think a really big angle right now would be getting involved in 3D and 3D creation. You know, Blender is a free tool. There's a ton of tutorials out there to learn how to use it. I think 3D asset creation is going to be massive. We saw the introduction of, you know, Apple's, you know, hybrid wearables that are going to, you know, incorporate augmented reality in a big way. I think if you're looking for a job creation and opportunity, merge 3D creation and the skills that can be found in AI. And, and I think you'll be really set up well uh, as an entrepreneur, or even, you know, if you're just looking for a high paying high value jobs, there's going to be a huge, huge surge in demand, in my opinion, for these types of jobs over the next five years. And that's why you stick around till the end of the episode. You never know when there's going to be some gold yes. dropped. Like that's the free game right there. Free game. If you stuck around and got all the way through, you got some free information that might make you a shitload of money. So it's to your benefit to go take action on that. People are really lazy, like I said early on. So I'm going to have all your stuff linked in the description, but I want you to say the Twitter handle out loud so people can go and reach you and, and connect with you and maybe even become a part of the Kid Called Beast community. Yeah, definitely. So we have only one website. It's a kid called beast.com. We have no other websites because there's just a lot of scams out there that people try to like take advantage of other people. So a kid called beast.com. Our Twitter handle is a kid called beast. My personal handle is just Rapsby, R-A-F-S-B-Y. Follow me on, on Twitter or Instagram. I use the same handle. So awesome, man. Thank you so much for coming on the show. It has been an absolute pleasure getting to learn more about you. I know we briefly met in Miami, like maybe a year and a half ago. And it's crazy how life brings things yeah. full circle. So again, absolute pleasure having you on. I cannot wait to continue to follow your journey and what a kid called Beast has over the next five to 10 years. And I can't wait to stay connected. So thanks for coming on. And I look forward to this episode coming out. I appreciate you, man. Thank you.